Zero, Chris. Zero. That's the number of times Bryce Young threw a touchdown pass to Deontay Johnson this season. Zero. Mm. We barely Zero. knew you. We barely knew you. Barely even knew you. Bye. Get the sucker started. Get dialed in, Panthers fans. Here comes an in-depth look at your team. Exclusive interviews. Locker room insight. Ready. Let's huddle up. Let's just do it, okay? For Panthers Playbook, driven by Carolina Ford dealers. Here are your hosts, Dennis Cox and Chris Lee. Welcome back to another episode of Panthers Playbook. That's Chris Lee. Dennis Cox here with you. Leave us your thoughts in the comments section, by the way, on the Deontay Johnson trade. And also share your thoughts on Bryce Young starting once again. We're going to dive into both things here including maybe give us your grade on Dan Morgan and what he's done so far when it comes to trades because we've seen Brian Burns get traded. We've seen Deontay Johnson get traded. The trade of Deontay Johnson coming in. What's your grade on Dan Morgan, what he's done so far? But before we dive into that, Chris, got to let the people know that Panthers Playbook is sponsored by Carolina Ford Dealers with a Ford F-150 on your team. It's game on to your Carolina Ford dealer today. Chris, I was not surprised, and I even talked to a couple people in the Panthers organization that – Deontay Johnson getting traded was an inevitable thing, but I was shocked at how little they got in return. I was shocked at how little they got in return. That's the thing that surprised me and really a lot of people out there. Yeah, I was too, but I think that has more to do with where the Carolina Panthers are and what the league thinks of Deontay Johnson Yeah, versus anything that Dan Morgan is doing, right? True. Like, I, I'm not going to throw Dan Morgan under the bus. I don't feel like Dan Morgan, you know, got fleeced or anything like that. Um, when I, you know, I think I was a little bit more emotional over it as far as what they got in return uh, when I first heard about it. But after mm -hmm. sleeping on it, uh, it was like, okay, that's probably the best you can do. And if we kind of sit back and think about it, getting a compensatory pick, if he were to walk, isn't guaranteed for the Panthers, right? It's not. So... And you don't get that uh, until 2026, by the way. Right. So, you know, if you think about it, they essentially let off Dante Jackson to get Deontay Johnson in and probably a player that they don't know if they wanted him around or they don't know if he was going to resign with him. I mean, at this point, if you had the choice between the Panthers and somebody else, you probably are going to pick somebody else if mm -hmm. you're, you know, somebody in, in the league. So I just look at this now as, okay, we still have something for Dante Jackson, right? We yeah. had this guy for uh, a few games, uh, seven, eight games, whatever it was, I think seven games, and it was cool. It was good having uh, somebody who gets open, who has hands, uh, and who can run really great routes. Uh, but I think me and you have seen it when we've been in the locker room. Feels like he's a hard dude to get along with, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we know about some of the things that he did in, in, with the Steelers, mm -hmm. literally taking plays off having opportunities to pick up uh, fumbles right there in front of him. And he's just walking, not letting, not doing anything and watching mm -hmm. the other team pick up the ball and go the other way and not even trying uh, to stop him. Like he's a guy who, who's came in with his issues. You talked about that uh, yeah. when we first got him, you're a, you know, a, a Steelers fan because you grew up that way and yeah. you know, it's, it's a great organization. So I don't, I don't blame you, but um, you know, it was one of those things where like, I don't necessarily like seeing him go. I wish he would have worked out. Mm -hmm. This isn't like one of those things, oh, he's horrible. We just got to get him out. No. Um, if you feel like you have something with your young core, with Jalen Coker, with Xavier Legat, and you feel like they are, they could possibly pick up bad habits, get that bad, you know, juju out of the locker room. And yeah. if you don't think that you're going to get anything back for him, or if you don't think that you're going to be able to retain him, might want to get something. So uh, it might. this might be a situation where Dan Morgan just did what he had to do. I think there's a lot of that. Like, they just wanted to get that guy out of the building. I think there's a lot of that. And also, you got to look and see what the wide receiver market, you know, what was dictated by other trades that were made previously. When I saw DeAndre Hopkins was traded for conditional fifth, that can bump up to the fourth by the Kansas City Chiefs. Very true. If, if they win the Super Bowl and he plays like 60% of the snaps or something along those lines, like, 
basically you traded a late fifth round pick, the equivalent of what the Baltimore Ravens just gave you. Yeah. Uh, that's essentially it. Yeah. Now, granted, you had to give up the sixth round pick with it. But when I saw that happen, I was like, yeah, you're not going to get the third round pick, which reportedly the Panthers were asking for for Deontay Johnson. Yeah. But I also bring up this. You talk about what the league sees players as, right? Like, I think when we see these trades, we actually get a true idea of what people value in players. Yep. Deontay Johnson, who is the number two receiver along alongside George Pickens up in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was willing to let their number two receiver go to get Dante Jackson, who was an oft injured corner. I guess remember he had the torn Achilles and he was a little bit banged up in last year. What's that? Having a hell of a year this year. Yeah, exactly. And he has five interceptions. Go figure. Um, But here's the thing. He was an oft injured corner, right? So you're willing to give your number two receiver up for an oft injured corner and a late round pick swap, a six and seven. You're willing to part with your number two receiver who has had thousand yard seasons for a mm-hmm. guy that hasn't played a full season in like two years. Like that's what they're willing to do. And a player that Dante Jackson, that the Panthers were going to cut. So like that's, that's, they were willing to give that up for Deontay Johnson. And it's just like other teams could have made a similar move to get that guy, but they didn't. Now the Panthers made the move as a scratcher ticket. Guess what? You didn't quite hit fine. You move on. You separated from your losses. It is what it is. Uh, I think the biggest thing you brought it up, you didn't want to have that guy around your team anymore, especially yeah. your young receivers, especially when you hear him saying like, well, you know, I can't do everyone else's job. I'm like, right. dude, you're not even fully running right. your own routes. You're not even catching right. balls every time they're throwing your way. You're not even fully doing your own job. So guess what? You moved on. You got rid of it. That's totally fine. The I wish it was as opposed to a six going to Baltimore. If it was a seventh, I would have been like, all right, cool. That's fine. But guess what? The market apparently just wasn't that big for him. It just really wasn't. And I think this is also sometimes us as fans, we try and value what we have yep. more yep. than what everyone else in the league thinks. Like we value Deontay Johnson. It's like, oh, you could have got a fourth for the guy or a third. I was like, actually, no, that's not really the case. Like Amari Cooper only got a third, yep. you know, like that's, I mean, there's like a couple other picks and things like that that kind of went in return, but really it was a third. Like for Amari Cooper, who well, I'm sorry, is better than Deontay Johnson. You weren't going to get a third. I mean, it's what it is, but you know what? I'm finally seeing Jalen Coker getting all, catching all those targets or getting all those targets thrown his way as opposed to Deontay Johnson. I'm fine with Xavier Lee get, getting more targets coming his way. I'm cool with me. Like, I'm cool with those guys getting more balls thrown their way. Pause. I mean, Jalen Coker, as you, you mentioned him, he is – uh, the third best graded rookie wide receiver in the NFL right now, right? Yeah. Somebody who went undrafted, who went to a small school, he is literally um, separating from NFL defenses and mm-hmm. getting open. So that's somebody that, and he's cheap right now. He's going to be very oh, yeah. cheap for a little bit. So uh, you get a chance to kind of build on that and have that. And now you have, this is not, you know, the best, right? But you have David Moore as a veteran who could step in. Maybe Adam Thielen ends up playing again. Uh, this uh, this Sunday, mm-hmm. and then now you have uh, a decent core from those four, plus Jonathan Mingo, and <laughs> plus yeah, Jonathan Mingo, plus Jonathan Mingo, and, and him, and you have uh, some guys that could possibly do something. Yeah, um, you know, for for what it is, right? It's not the best core in the NFL, but it's also a hell of a lot better than what it was last year. So as a whole, yeah, as a whole, as it's a, a whole, a lot better than what it, what it was last year. So. Um, you know, I, again, I'm cool with it. Um, I personally wish it would have worked out. Likewise. I think, I think it would have been cool to have a Deontay Johnson and an Xavier Leggett and a Jalen Coker for the future of the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. But if it's not going to work out, if you're trying to build something and you have somebody in the locker room who is not going to let you build this thing uh, the way that you want, not going to bring, um, you know, the, the type of energy that you want inside that building, you got to get rid of them and you have to get something. So, um, you know, I would say kudos to Dan Morgan for actually, you know, pulling the trigger. Sometimes we don't understand the inner workings of things and, and, and the goings on of what's happening. And maybe this was like literally the best. I know it was rumored that two other teams were mm-hmm. talking uh, to the Panthers about Deontay Johnson. They wanted a third and the Ravens came in with the better deal. Yeah. I'm sorry. If that was the better deal, then that means the other teams weren't offering anything yeah. for him. So Dan Morgan got something. And I think that is something to applaud 
So everybody who's going in on Dan Morgan, I think you're wrong in this case. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was hoping to get more, but you know what? It is what it is. Yeah. What's done is done, and the only thing we can look forward to now is this Sunday, which, by the way, who's throwing these guys the ball? It's Bryce Young. Once yeah. again, he's going to get his second straight start. A little redemption opportunity from that terrible 47-10 to 10 game that we saw week one against the New Orleans Saints, and it's the Saints team that is reeling, Chris. Like, it is reeling. I know Derek Carr might be back and playing for them this coming weekend. He's missed time with an oblique injury, but this is a defense for the Saints that have just been giving up yards. I'm talking they've given up 500, 400 plus in recent games. I think they had another game where they gave up 380. Like, that's the last three or so weeks for them. They're giving up a ton of yards left and right. Hey, you're back at home. Panthers, you got the one guy out of the locker room, fine. You know what your team is going forward. Go play. Like, go play. Bryce, it's another chance for you to go prove something. And, of course, Rashid Shahid is out yeah, for the season. Yeah, he's out for the season. So, uh, and he was the guy that broke it wide open for the for the Saints in that first game. Very so, first drive. You know, it's. I, I think this is a good thing. Um, the Panthers have a chance to get a winnable game at home. Yeah. Uh, even with what the result was last time, as you said, the Saints have been reeling. This is a winnable game. So now offense, Bryce Young, um, don't make any mistakes. Don't throw an interception on the very first play of the game. Yeah. You know, don't do that because <laughs> don't do that's that. what happened last time. Um, Xavier Lee Jalen Coker, hopefully Adam Thielen is back. Hey, have sure hands and get open, uh, run crisp routes, defense, just try not to give up over 150 rushing yards. Like, you know, I, I, I'll that. concede. I'll concede. You're probably going to give up 100. Don't give up over 150 and get off the field on third down. And uh, and then we'll have a better game. We'll have a chance to uh, actually win the game. So uh, this is definitely a winnable game. And I hope for Bryce Young's sake, right? Because I think there are some people, the discourse around Bryce Young has been interesting over the last uh, few days because. Oh, we've seen the comments. <laughs> You've got people who are just like, well, wait a minute. He balled out. He had 224 yards. After the Panthers were down. 28 to 7. 28 to 7. Yeah. Up until that point, he only had 60. 39 of those were on the first drive alone. He did not ball out. He just simply took what a soft defense gave him at the end of the game because they knew the Panthers uh, weren't going to come back, and they could just do that and you know not put their guys in harm's way. Mm-hmm. That's literally all that happened. But, you know, hey, we'll see. Hopefully he does a lot better. Hopefully he can hit guys and have his confidence back and things like that. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to see it too. Uh, and speaking of that discourse regarding around Bryce Young, again, the, the, the fan base is split. And here's something I hope people understand, is that more than one thing can be true. Mm. You and I both had the feeling of, you know what? He's a backup quarterback. And people were making the comparisons to Andy Dalton. Well, Andy Dalton's also a backup quarterback. Yeah. Like, he's, Andy Dalton's also a backup quarterback in this yep. league. Like, that's the thing. The Panthers have two backup quarterbacks. And we talked about it a bunch all last season. We talked about it in the offseason coming into this year about how Bryce Young was thrown into a terrible situation. Terrible yes. ownership, yes, terrible coaching, all those things. Everything around him was terrible. That's also true. Like yes. all, multiple things can be true at one time. It's not yes. just one thing or another. It's not binary. Yes. All these things can be true. And honestly, I think they all are like, yeah, he was thrown into an awful situation. The Everything around him sucked. The receiving core outside of Adam Thielen was trash. The offensive line was leakier than a, than a, than a sieve, like a colander trying to drain water. That's what the offensive line was. Miles Sanders didn't do anything in the running game. Coaching staff getting fired, flip-flopping back and forth about who's calling plays. Yeah, terrible situation. And then coming to this year, things around him got a little bit better. And he still didn't play very well. So guess what? He also can be a backup quarterback. Both those things can be true. And Andy Dalton is a backup quarterback as well. All those things can be and I think are true. It's just a reality. Here's something that I, I heard uh, Ian Rappaport say. Uh, of course, he's connected inside of the Panthers uh, locker room, mm-hmm. front office and things like that, is that when he was benched, the front office did not look at this as we're moving on from Bryce Young. Mm-hmm. They still see a possible future with him. So, okay, maybe that is the case. Uh, so we said it last week uh, under the assumption that if uh, Andy Dalton was uh, ready, he'd play, which to me, if you listen to Dave Canales, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. It basically sounds like if Andy Dalton could play, 
he would play. But he can't play, so we're going with Bryce. Uh, so now that he has this opportunity, um, I just hope he looks a little bit better and is proving that front office to be right. You know what I'm saying? Because if they see him as the guy, then that means they're going to go into the draft and free agency next year uh -huh. with the idea that they're going to make everything else around him better to set him up for a third season with the Carolina Panthers. Okay, now, Bryce, go out there and ball out. Yeah. Go out and here and ball the thing. out. If, if he shows that he is a starting quarterback in the future, I'll say I'm wrong. I was sure. not afraid to say it because you know why? We've said that before on this we, show. We've said we that have. we're wrong. We're we not afraid to say we're wrong. When we yeah. said, I think they're going to beat the Bears, and then they get smiggity smacked in the face. And I was like, eat crow, baby. Let's go. We yeah. were wrong, and we owned it, and we flat out owned it. And guess what? If Bryce Young proves to be a starting QB in this league, I'll own that too and say I was wrong. For sure. I'll own it too and say I was wrong. Same here. Yeah, we'll do it. We're not above it. We're definitely not above it. But you know what? I will say this on that first drive, it felt like there was the confident little bit of a swagger Bryce that we saw coming in as a rookie, right? For sure. We saw that on that first drive. He threw the touchdown pass to Xavier really Leggett. I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, like, why Bryce first time a throwing a touchdown here? on the opening drive, though, in his career? Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Which is also interesting, too. Yeah. But I was like, okay, like, I felt like, all right, there it was. And then it, it went away. Cause in the next seven drives, there were more delay of games than there were first downs. Yeah. For the offense. Now I understand like Xavier Lee get dropped one. He probably could have laid out for a ball down the left sideline. I know there's again the seam route to Xavier Lee get went off his hands. Great thrown ball. It's what it is. But no, overall, the offense just did not move against Denver. Against the Denver defense is awesome. But it is what it is. But guess what? You're going to play awesome defenses in the league. You know why? Because it's the NFL. Yeah. You're going to play great teams. And you have to be able to play against good teams. Yeah. Simple as that. But you know what? We're going to be there on Sunday, Chris. We are going to be there on Sunday, um, be, and it's it's time for another win, right? I need, like, I want to win. And, and here's the and here's the thing: you can win this week. You could possibly win next week in in Germany, yeah, and go into the bye week with a little bit of momentum, yeah. And and those two things really aren't out of the realm of possibility. Now they can also get blown out too. So there's also kind of hard, that. It's kind of hard to pick that, but um, mm -hmm. you can possibly um, you know win two games in a row. Go into the bye week, rest up, have some momentum coming out of the bye week. When it's going to get kind of hard, right? You're you're going to have awesome. uh, the Chiefs. <laughs> you're going to have the Chiefs coming in. You're going to have the Dallas team. I mean, they may not be a playoff team this year, but Dallas, I think, still is is worlds better than the Panthers. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're going to have uh, you haven't gone against uh, the the Bucks yet. You're going to have uh, Atlanta again. So you know, you've got some some hard games kind of coming up. And I mean, shoot. The, uh, the Cardinals looking pretty good as well. You got mm -hmm. them coming up at home. So, um, but let's focus on this week and then next week and, and get some wins, man. I mean, you know, just at this point, you got to play for pride. And if you just, if everybody does their job, the Panthers can not only be competitive, they could possibly squeak out a win. And hopefully in the very near future, we're going to see Jonathan Brooks, DJ Wanham, Adam yeah. Thielen coming yeah. back. Like, yep. I'm hoping to see that too. I'm excited about that. So something to look forward to, believe it or not, Panthers fans, you have something to look forward to, yep. including Sunday's episode of Panthers Playbook after the Saints game. Chris and I are going to be down there at Bank of America Stadium giving you another episode of Panthers Playbook brought to you by Carolina Ford Dealers with a Ford F-150 on your team. It's game on. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Chris, we'll see you on Sunday.